In the previous video, we talked about negative operons and the difference between a negative inducible operon and a negative repressible operon. In this video, we're going to talk about the opposite, which is a positive operon. So we're going to discuss the difference between a positive inducible operon and a positive repressible operon. So first, we're going to start with the inducible. So if we look here, this in the previous video was a repressor, but in this video, it's actually, we're going to draw it in green because it's going to be an activator. It's going to start transcription when it is activated. So instead of binding here and stopping transcription, it is going to start it, okay? So in a positive inducible operon, this is going to be inactive all the time until a substrate, so we have transcription once again, that makes this enzyme here that this substrate and then your final product right here. This substrate will bind to this, activate it, cause it to come up here and it will bind here and increase the affinity of the DNA or RNA polymerase binding to the, uh, the promoter and starting transcription. So that is how a positive inducible operon works. So normally transcription will be off. And then once this substrate activates the uh, activator, uh, activator enzyme, it will bind and thus activate transcription and start transcription so that these mRNA and these genes can be created for this biochemical pathway. Now, if you look at a negative or sorry, a positive repressible operon, it is the complete opposite. So we have an active activator all the time. So we will redraw here. This is green, it's an activator. It will always be bound here. And transcription will always be happening. So you're always gonna have these enzymes being made. But then eventually, when there's too much of this, and there's a lot of this product right here, actually we're gonna draw it in red because it's gonna turn off transcription. So this end product here is gonna come up and it's gonna to bind to this activator, which will release it and cause it to let's say just come back down here, and then transcription will be off. So in the previous video we talked about negative inducible, negative repressible. So negative inducible means that the repressor is always bound. And then this substrate will bind and inactivate it so that transcription can be turned on. In a negative repressible, we had a product which activates the repressor and turns transcription off. In a positive inducible, we have an activator here which will be um, bound by the substrate right here substrate which will activate it and bind it here which will then activate transcription and transcription will be on and then we had a positive repressible which is repressed you have this uh, activator that's normally bound which will then be repressed by or it'll be bound by this by this molecule here this product molecule which will inactivate it and unbind it which will come down here and then transcription will be turned off or at least slowed down